Hi, I'm Dr. Melina Jampoulis, and I'm a board-certified physician nutrition specialist. And I'm so excited to be talking to you today about my favorite topic, food as medicine, what you probably know as nutrition. And specifically, I'm going to talk about how good nutrition can help you age better. My goal through this lecture is not just to increase your lifespan, but also to increase your health span. And that, to me, is really part of aging gracefully. So let's get started. When you look at people's diets, there's something called the diet inflammatory index. So how much your diet causes inflammation. And it's been found that the higher inflammatory your diet is, you have an 85% increased risk of heart disease an 80% of having actually shorter caps at the end of your DNA, which have been associated with aging, a 75% increased risk of getting cancer, and a 67% increased risk of dying from cancer. So inflammation, whether it's chronic in your body or coming from your diet, is a really bad thing, and that's something that we want to avoid. So how do we avoid that? What should you eat to decrease inflammation and disease? I've actually been talking for over 10 years about something that I think is very, very interesting and very, very helpful. It's called the Alternative Healthy Eating Index. Why is it alternative? Because our government has something called the Healthy Eating Index, which is based on the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. But this index is even more exciting. It was actually developed by researchers at the Harvard School of Public Health as an alternative measure of diet quality to really hone in on diet-related diseases. It's all evidence-based, so based on the latest research, and it incorporates both food and nutrients that predict chronic disease. And the recommendations really, I think, better improve risk factors and the Alternative Healthy Eating Index has been shown to more strongly predict your risk of chronic disease and dying. It actually has been associated with a 25% decreased risk in death from any cause, a 40% decreased risk in death due to heart disease, a 30% reduction in inflammation, remember that's something we want to avoid as much as possible in our body unless it's acute, an 88% decreased risk of diabetes, and reversal of something called metabolic syndrome, which you may not have heard about, but it's basically pre-diabetes. And it's when you tend to carry your fat more in the middle, so when you're more apple-shaped, and you may have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or high blood sugar. So the Alternative Healthy Eating Index can reverse that completely. It's also been shown to be associated with a 24% decreased risk of cognitive impairment, so that's problems with your brain and processing. And it's inversely associated with depression, so it can help your mood too. And finally, it's actually been associated with a 34% better odds of healthy aging. And the coolest thing about the Alternative Healthy Eating Index is that the benefits are independent of what you weigh. So you don't have to lose weight, you don't have to get to your goal body weight, you don't have to fit into those high school genes for to be healthier and to reduce inflammation and to live longer and better. So what is the Alternative Health Eating Index? You're probably really excited about hearing about it right about now. Well, it actually has 11 components. Six of them are foods and nutrients that you should increase in your diet. One, you should consume in moderation. And four, you should reduce. It actually has a max score of 110, and you get different scores. We're not gonna go into the details too much of the scoring. I'm just gonna go through each one individually to make sure that you really understand it and that you're able to implement it immediately as soon as you get up from watching this presentation. So the first one is having five servings of vegetables, which is about two and a half cups, and four servings of fruit, which is about two cups. 
And if you do that, that gets you the top score. But anything towards that gets you a better score. So you really, really need to work on that. Now, specifically, based on different diets across the world, you really want to look for dark green leafy vegetables, deep yellows, reds, tomatoes, and just to be clear, this doesn't include potatoes, sorry french fries, or vegetable juices. So you have to eat the entire vegetable, not just the juice. Now, when it comes to fruit, this includes citrus fruit, berries, you're gonna hear later, are extraordinary for the brain, but dried fruit is okay too. You just have to decrease your portions a little bit. But again, this does not include fruit juices. So the benefits of having the entire fruit or vegetable and not just the juice is that you get all the antioxidants in the food, you get the naturally occurring fiber, and you get all the phytonutrients. These are plant-based nutrients that can help reduce inflammation in your body chronically. Now it's also very important, as much as possible, to get a variety because then you'll ensure that you get all the beneficial phytonutrients and vitamins and minerals to help you achieve optimal health. The second thing on the list, and this is something that's a little new that people don't necessarily think about including necessarily, but is to get at least one serving of nuts, seeds, or legumes, which are beans and peas and also peanuts, every single day. One serving. Why is that so important? All of these are rich sources of plant-based protein. So instead of animal protein like meat and dairy, this is protein from plants. And there's health benefits to that in and of itself. When it comes to nuts and seeds, they're also great sources of unsaturated fat. And we'll talk a little bit more about that next. They're great sources of fiber and they're loaded with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and some cholesterol-lowering heroes called phytosterols. They also help reduce cholesterol and can help reduce triglycerides. And believe it or not, they're not associated with weight gain. A lot of people are a little bit scared of eating too many nuts, but the reality is research shows that they're not associated with weight gain. They actually make you feel more full and keep your blood sugar more stable. And what kind of nut should you eat? Any nut, pistachios, walnut, almonds, peanuts, eat your favorite nut, try to get a variety. Again, you'll hear me say that over and over. Variety is the spice of life. In addition to nuts and seeds, legumes fall into this category too. And that includes beans, peas, tofu. It also includes some soy milk products, but they don't count for as much. They only get half a score. Why are legumes so important? They're a great source of magnesium. The majority of Americans are deficient in magnesium, and it's very important for regulating your muscles, your bowels, your blood sugar. Magnesium is a key nutrient that Americans need to get more. Leafy greens are a great source too, by the way. Legumes are also a great source of fiber and those phytonutrients we talked about. They're associated with a reduced risk of heart disease. They can protect you from type two diabetes. They may reduce your risk of hormone dependent cancers, specifically soy, but in its whole form, not processed soy. And they can also help you feel fuller. So they're so rich in fiber that they stick with you longer. They actually have something called sticky fiber that slows the passage of food through your stomach and helps you feel fuller longer. Now you can do either dried beans or beans in a can. If you eat them out of a can, just make sure that you rinse them to get rid of most of the sodium because we'll talk about that later too. Hopefully I've inspired you to broaden your food choices, maybe bring some foods in that you hadn't thought of before, maybe cut back on a few that you may be overdoing a little bit as you get older or that you thought you could still get away with because you're in great shape. Thank you so much and it's been a pleasure speaking with you today and I wish you good health and healthy aging.